from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. The meat was so freezer burnt, we couldn't even give it to a dog. Shocking allegations against the CEO of the Billings Food Bank. The bread was moldy. The milk was like three weeks expired. Cheryl Shandy defending herself this morning over claims she's mistreating the very people she's supposed to be helping. I'd like them to walk in our shoes for just 10 minutes. Now hundreds are calling for her resignation. Good morning. Welcome to Montana this morning, 6 a.m. on this Friday, September 29th. I'm Casey Conlon in for Augusta McDonald. Behind me, you see a change.org petition now with over 700 signatures. It's titled Remove the CEO of the Billings Food Bank, alleging everything from hostile and inappropriate interactions to rotten food being handed out to clients. This morning, our Alina Howder speaks to Shandy and the woman who started the petition to get both sides of the story. I was kind of in disbelief and just really thought this can't really be happening. When Rebecca Perfit posted about her experience with the Billings Food Bank, she didn't expect this. I had hundreds of inbox messages. Perfit runs a nonprofit that supports families with kids in the foster care system and had taken one of her clients to get food, a struggling mom trying to get back on her feet. So the mom said, I had been homeless and I don't have an ID yet. We're working on getting that. And Cheryl then turned to her and said, well, then you get no food. I was kind of like blown away that this is the place that you go to for help. Our issue was she had no ID. Cheryl Shandy is well aware of the growing criticism. She's helped serve more than 120,000 families in just the last four years and has been director of the food bank for four decades. I got death threats when I first started. But she acknowledges those complaints have never been louder. So much so, she says she's hired a private investigator to determine exactly Exactly who's behind them. The uh, folks that come in that think that this is just an entitlement program, which it isn't. And it's usually the same group of people. There is a group of people that mostly do nothing but gripe all day. MTN obtained this letter sent to the board by Ryan Johnson, who managed food and beverage operations for a few weeks. He told the board, quote, people are denied food daily. That makes no sense. This organization is grossly mismanaged. He says, quote, I left because morally I could not support what is happening in the confines of that building. So that's just a disgruntled Poor, you know, I mean, and that happens all the time. I have an Irish temper, but it's not directed at any poor soul that really needs our help. It's somebody trying to get away with not having to follow, follow the rules. Does it make you feel like you guys are doing anything wrong? No. Absolutely not. But Rebecca Perfit, who started the petition, disagrees and says rules are not. It all boils down to decency. My biggest fight is we should respect and just be kind. No one knows what anyone is going through at any given time. Just walk out in kindness. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. All right, it's time to get a quick check of our weather with Miller Robson. Morning, everybody. All right, you ready for some fall weather? Oh, man, I, I'm ready. I've been feeling it, and uh, I'm yeah. kind of enjoying the fact that it looked like there was going to be more rain earlier this week. And yeah. now yeah, not so much. You know, we, we've been talking about this area of low pressure coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Coming out of there, you know, you think you got a lot of moisture with it. Well, they're going to get it up there in the Pacific Northwest, but it looks like it's going to kind of dry out before it makes its way to our area. Explain what we're talking about here in just a bit, but check this out. We got our final super moon. It's about 16% uh, bigger in the sky. Uh, and we hit our peak earlier this morning. It's our harvest moon named after the harvesting season. We got some more uh, uh, pictures we're going to show you coming up here in just a bit. And if you got one, send it in. Weather at KTVQ.com. We'll try to show it off as we go along this morning. Yesterday, uh, pretty seasonal, just a little cooler than average. We're going to see more seasonal temperatures here in Billings for the next couple of days. Of course, it was dry. It's been a very dry month. Uh, we're going to end the month on a dry note, but as we get into the first uh, couple of days of October, maybe a, a chance we could see some rain, not a whole lot of rain, and maybe some mountain snow coming in with that system. Right now, feeling good. 45 at the airport feels like 40 uh, winds out the southwest at about 10 miles an hour. Take a look at temperatures across the area. Uh, still our cold spot. White Sulphur Springs at 29 right now They're up there in Mark County. 39 in Columbus, 36 in uh, Columbus. We've got, let's see here, 46 in Forsyth, 49 in Broadus, and 48 currently in Miles City down in northern parts of Wyoming, low uh, to mid 40s. In fact, uh, northern Wyoming may be a better chance to see some of that rainfall off of that system. We'll take a look and we'll talk what we think may be the totals coming up here in just a bit. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, okay, Miller. Bye. See you in a second.
Lawmakers are expected to spend the weekend in Washington, D.C. with hopes to avoid a potential federal government shutdown just after midnight Sunday morning. The Senate is on track to vote on a bipartisan short-term spending measure to keep the government open through November. CBS's Jared Hill has the latest. With a possible government shutdown now less than 48 hours away, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy with a last-minute effort to bring his party together and keep the bills paid. I don't think the country is better if we have a shutdown. He's planning a vote as soon as today on a continuing resolution to keep the government funded for now tacking on border security to appeal to hardliners within his own party. Meanwhile, the Senate is working on its own CR to keep the government open through mid-November. It includes $6 billion in aid to Ukraine, though, a non-starter for hard right House conservatives. McCarthy has said he won't bring up the current Senate bill for a vote. Kevin McCarthy is playing a losing game here. And he's doing it with the American economy. Federal agencies have already sounded the alarm on what would happen in a potential shutdown. The Department of Homeland Security says more than 70 percent of its workforce would have to work without pay. That includes Border Patrol agents and members of the U.S. Coast Guard. We're not people that have millions of dollars sitting in our bank account. We're normal people who really, really need paid, and it's not fair. Tens of thousands of federal workers face furloughs if there's a shutdown, but members of Congress would still get their paychecks. Jared Hill, CBS News. House Republicans also passed three bills yesterday to fund the Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, and State, but those bills are not likely to pass the Senate. A government shutdown would likely close national parks as well, and if they do close, that'd be bad news for gateway communities like Cody, Wyoming, that rely on the tourism dollars. Hotel owners, though, will be watching to see if this shutdown will be like the one from five years ago. That year, some national parks locked their gates, but Yellowstone remained technically open, just without staff. It's at least a potential silver lining for businesses that need visitors to survive. When the, it flooded last year, you know, we shut down for a couple weeks, we definitely saw a downtick in, in, in tourism and, and travel. Our business was maybe a third of what it was before the park closed, and then it never really did quite come back. The looming shutdown could spell trouble for the Head Start daycare program as well, specifically surrounding the food kids receive. Many are getting breakfast, lunch, and a snack before they go home. Head Start relies on reimbursement and funding from the Child, Adult, and Care Food Program. The good news for Billings kids, our local Head Start program already received its funding for the entire upcoming year, but others across the country aren't as lucky. They probably are making backup plans and Perhaps they have a reserve or something that would help them continue to offer services for a few weeks or even a month. We currently serve 264 children and their families. Our services are completely free. Of course, there's qualifications to participate in our program. Most of our families are living at or below federal poverty guidelines. The shutdown has Montanans who rely on the government's WIC program also worried. Benefits will continue through October, even if the shutdown happens this weekend. But if lawmakers don't reach a deal by November, there's a lot of uncertainty. Individuals who are receiving those funds, if they don't receive it past that October deadline, would rely on us. So we're seeing right now around 120 families every single day in our food room. Uh, and if we had to see more, it would just really affect on how much we can put out through the food room. WIC provides nutrition assistance to almost 3,000 women, infants, and children in Yellowstone and surrounding counties. Well, new this morning, as you drive down some of Billings' busiest streets, you'll notice something's changed with the way businesses are popping up. It's all part of the city's mission to adopt new building codes, which we're now starting to see come to life. But as our Andrea Lutz found out, while safety is at the center of these changes, some still have concerns. On busy Grand Avenue. It's a change and it's something new. At 16th Street. Grand Avenue is a super busy corridor. Cars go rushing by. And that's where City Planning Director Wyatt Friday stands. He says feeling the traffic is exactly the point. And we can see it and hear it. They're right here. City leaders so, have been yeah. busy fine-tuning and tweaking new commercial zoning codes since 2021. So new commercial businesses, um, the buildings are actually required to be closer to the street. Um, and also have parking either on the side or the rear. This new city brew on Grand Avenue was built under those new codes, as well as several buildings on King Avenue and on 24th. So far, roughly 10 have been built this new way. Well, the idea there is to help both bring the, the buildings up 
to create a different feel for the street corridor, uh, both from a vehicle standpoint, in terms of speeds, making it feel a little bit slower, a little bit, you know, buildings closer in. Friday says by moving buildings closer to traffic, it would inevitably slow down cars, reduce signage, and make pedestrians feel safer. Uh, feeling like, oh, it's a little bit tighter here. I'm not going to feel quite as comfortable to go, you know, that extra speed. But Councillor Pam Puritan says the design isn't sustainable. Some of the plans that are put out there, I don't think they're practical. And I think we need to come from a more practical center. She says these new codes end up costing developers more in the long run. The more regulations, the more it's going to cost. And that's what you want to try to keep down whether it's residential or commercial. The hope is to create a safer feel for a busy road. So yeah, that's that's part of the long term goal. But it will take years before planners say we'll see hectic streets like Grand look any different. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. A district court judge in Helena has agreed to delay a new state law that would require abortion clinics to be licensed by the state. The law was set to take effect this coming Sunday. Judge Chris Abbott granted a temporary restraining order against one section of House Bill 937. The bill requires the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services to establish rules for clinics and issue licenses. However, the department hasn't yet come out with those rules. Two Montana clinics sued, saying they were in a state of legal uncertainty over how and whether they could continue to operate once the law took effect. In his ruling, Abbott said the state has acknowledged it's difficult to enforce the law until the rules are in place and that a restraining order was justified to address the clinic's concerns. He set a hearing of October 30th on a possible longer term injunction. Well, we are now just one week away from our favorite day of the year. The annual Pink Breakfast honoring breast cancer survivors and caregivers is next Friday, October 6th at 6 a.m right here inside our downtown studios. So many have already RSVP'd, but we want even more to sign up. So if you're coming, please fill out the form at ktvq.com slash pink right there on the screen. Now, if you're not a survivor or caregiver, but want to find some way to help, you should also go to the website because we're raising money for Pack the Place in Pink, a local organization that has done amazing work for breast cancer patients in our community. We cannot wait to celebrate these incredible people next week again, next Friday, 6 a.m., right here downtown.